I'm going to be talking about something slightly different. <laughs> I'd like to share with you two examples of how we've used the unexpected to promote TVOE, the book of everyone. Each example looks at a different emotion and the effect that emotion has on our marketing data. We'll start with a little shitting dog, <laughs> humor. So this was us, the three founders, Steve, Jason, and myself, back in May 2016. Um, it was drawn by Steve's 12-year-old son. As you can see by me, I'm well-slept and fresh-faced. This is before Facebook started messing around with their algorithm. It was also the time that our investors came to us, and they came to us with a suggestion that dramatically changed our digital marketing from that day forward. For the last two years, their wisdom had guided us from a startup or a pipe dream of three middle-aged men yeah, to a thriving personalized book startup. Their suggestion was to move some of the team from our office in Barcelona, a few minutes away from the Mediterranean, to London, <laughs> which was our key market. The team were thrilled. One of the uh, potential offices we looked at was just around the corner from here. And what was interesting was not the office, but an illustration that was on the door of the office opposite. And this was it. There was something about the simplicity, a little bit of humor in there, that Jason fell in love with. He's the other founder. And he hunted down the artist, who turned out to be Matt Abis, who was an animation director and lecturer at the Royal College of Art. Jason called him and asked if he wanted to do a spot for the Book of Everyone. He said, what's the Book of Everyone? Well, it's a curious, personalized book to celebrate anyone you want. There's a lot of crap gifts in the world. We're here to save you having to give one. And he said, is that my brief? And he goes, yeah, that's your brief. Is there a budget? No, but you can do anything you want. And he said, can you repeat that? I said, yes, you can do anything you want. Just tell a story. We didn't hear anything for about two and a half months. Uh, and we we're wondering whether we should just call him up. Uh, in the end, he called us and he only had one question. The question was, does doing what you want include a shitting dog? <laughs> Without hesitation, Jason said, yes, it does. So, before what became a seminal moment in the growth of our company, yeah, this is kind of the ads we were doing before like everyone else. There were Facebook ads. This was our smiley Asian woman, and this was our creepy guy. <laughs> Which one sold the most books? The creepy guy. Like everyone else, we looked at data sets, we looked at the interest categories, lookalikes, and person personas. Books were being sold, yeah, and we were growing. Uh, everyone in the office loved it, but no one in the marketing department wanted to run it. You can't run a shitting dog, you know, this is not an ad. Um, so this was a bit of a problem. Yeah, our ads were working was the issue. Yeah, and they had comments and they had a few likes and they had some relevancy scores. Yeah, and why should we change? They're working. And it was the problem. You know, if stuff's working, you don't want to change unless you have to. And we kind of had to. It was October, it was coming into our business, busiest time of the year because it was Christmas, but also we we're raising money. And in our investment deck, if anyone's been in, a, been in a startup, you have a hockey stick. Everyone has one. And we haven't quite proved it out at that stage. The reality was the wobbly stick. And the promised land was a little bit far away. So we had no choice but to try something new. So Tom and our digital marketing department reluctantly put some money behind it. And this happened. It didn't really work. Um, some people liked it and a few people watched it. So we went back to Creepy Guy until we noticed that the poster frame 
for this particular ad was our company logo, which was largely unheard of. And we changed it to a snapshot of the story. And that was when the little shitting dog made a big splash. And we got a whole bunch of likes, shares, and comments. And more importantly, our bounce rate was 20% lower, CPC is 20% cheaper, and the cost of acquiring clients was also cheaper as well. And the little dog was selling thousands of books a week, and that year we did actually get our funding, and we grew about 800%, and he certainly helped us get there. So what we kind of learned was don't sell, tell a story in an unexpected way. And you'll find that stories are a really powerful and lasting way to gather people around an idea or a brand. The other thing was optimize your poster frame. So since then, there's been a couple more. <clears throat> And this year. Yeah, he finally got, he gets his book this Christmas. So we thanked our investors, yeah, for finding Matt Abis, and we politely remained in Barcelona. The second example of unexpected advertising is a bit more recent, and it looks at the emotion of happiness. The book of everyone is about celebrating your loved ones. Every book that goes out makes someone, somewhere, we hope, feel unique and loved. So behind all the creativity, behind the algorithms and the technology, we're in the business of helping the world feel a little more human. And we're very proud of our customer satisfaction, which we've held across over 600,000 sales uh, at this level. But the key to it has been getting a good emotional response yeah, from our products, which isn't just customer service. It's how the products work with the customers. And smiles and laughs are good and thank yous are good, but what we prefer is tears. We get a lot of tears every week. I'm going to use this one as, a, as an example, yeah, because it was one of the first, and it came as a bit of a shock to us when this was posted up on Facebook by one of the customers. It said, my wife cried happy tears. The book pushed so many buttons at once, you don't know how powerful this thing is until you give it to someone you care about. I felt so thoughtful and a bit heroic. Thank you, the book of everyone. P.S. You should charge more. So this is really important to us, this emotional side of our business. And every now and again, so it goes a little further. We had someone phone up and request an extra copy of the book to take to the grave. I don't know about you guys, I've worked in advertising for 20 years. I've never persuaded anyone to take anything to the next world. So we try and pack emotion into our book. And if you pack this emotion and you combine it with a nice high level of customer service, you get people promoting you. And our net promoter score's always been 80 or above. And if people are promoting you, that also yeah, will be reflected and felt in your acquisition costs. So when we launch a new product, we don't just show the product, we try and find an unexpected emotion behind that product. The product we're launching at the moment is called the Video of Everyone. It's a free service yeah, where you can celebrate your loved ones through creating tribute videos for them. And what we needed was a demonstration video to show customers on the website how this worked. Um, and what we wanted was an unexpected candidate to star in this. A bloke. 
called Luke. Now, this is the hardest guy we know. Yeah, he's big, he's burly, he's loud, he's not renowned for his sensitivity. So what we did, we got his friends and family from over the world to, to basically sent, put a video in this service and then we filmed him. We told him we needed to make a little film of him because he's so good looking, we love his moustache, yeah, um, for our website. And we filmed his reaction. I'm Luke. I'm Teresa. She's a very good friend. She's someone I actually trust. He's amazing. Yeah, of course I am. Unfortunately, we don't get to see each other enough. She can always get on a plane. I decided to make Luke a video celebration through the book of everyone. You gave her. You dodgy dealer. Luke, may the force be with you. <laughs> Hello, babe. We love you. I love you, miss you, and I'll see you soon. Luke, I miss you. Luke, I miss you. I'm home. You've never seen me cry, ever. <laughs> and you've seen it when the guy done a runner from the bar with 50 quid tab. <laughs> um, so, what we learned was don't just show the product show the emotion created by the product in an unexpected way. Not only would your communication be more engaging, uh, but if you combine this with a, general care, a, a genuine care for your customers, it will affect your acquisition costs. Uh, and no amount of account optimization is the same as a referral. So tell a story, not just an ad. Show the emotion, not just the product and make it unexpected. Above all, be as human as possible. People are not infinite bids in automated auctions, data points in a set of categories, or correlations in giant spreadsheets. People are people, and treating them that way is an obvious but winning formula. Not just for your advertising or your bottom line, but also for society. Thank you.